The move by the RNC to censure Cheney and Kinzinger came shortly after former Vice President Mike Pence openly rebuked Donald Trump. This is what we're talking about while speaking to a group of conservative lawyers. So here is the former vice president pushing back at Trump's claim that Pence could have overturned the 2020 election. This week, that President Trump said I had the right to overturn the election. But president Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. And frankly, there is no idea more un-American than the notion that any one person could choose the American president. The truth is there's more at stake than our party or political fortunes. Men and women, if we lose faith in the Constitution, we won't just lose elections. We'll lose our country. I, I actually think that's a very significant thing. Tom and I differ uh, on, on that point because I think that's quite significant. Uh, and so does the Wall Street Journal editorial page. In a piece entitled Mike Pence's Constitution, the Wall Street Journal editorial page writes this. Mr. Stan uh, Pence stands out as a rare Republican these days willing to stand up to Mr. Trump's disgraceful behavior after the election. Too many in the GOP seem to have lost their constitutional moorings in thrall of one man. The conventional wisdom now is that Mr. Trump controls the Republican Party and can have 2024's nomination if he wants it. But someone should remind voters that Mr. Trump ended a three-time election loser. He mobilized Democrats against him and his historic numbers to cost the House uh, the GOP, the House in 2018, then the White House in 2020, and finally the two Georgia Senate seats in 2021. Mr. Trump had significant policy successes, but Mr. Pence has received too little credit for his policy and personal advice. His conservative network and instincts helped to avoid more than one Trumpian self implosion. He was loyal to Trump, and the president repaid him by pressuring him publicly and privately to commit an unconstitutional act. Uh, and we will uh, we'll end it there. Um, so it, it is very interesting, uh, if you look, Jonathan O'Meara, uh, at, at the arc of, of Mike Pence's service. Here's a guy who actually, uh, before he was selected uh, as Donald Trump's vice president, uh, was very critical of him in private conversations. Then he became a loyalist, loyal, loyalist, uh, even <laughs> moving water uh, in the same direction where Mr. Trump would move water at meetings. Um, but, uh, but last week, actually, to me at least, uh, that was quite a break, uh, quite a difference from how he and the rest of the party have been acting. And uh, it wasn't lost on me, or I'm sure you, that he did it at the Federalist Society. No, it was not. Federalist Society, of course, you know, one of the groups responsible for some of what Republicans would say were Donald Trump's greatest triumphs, naming three conservative Supreme Court justices to the bench while uh, in office. And you're right to trace the arc of Pence's career, where, first of all, he was likely going to lose his reelection candidacy for Republican governor of Indiana when uh, Trump picked him uh, to be his VP to shore up his support with more traditional conservatives and evangelicals. Uh, and then Pence became the loyalist loyalist with the dear leader ask cabinet meetings that he really started uh, praising the president. But there's, of course, been a falling out over January 6th. After Election Day, it became when it became clear that January 6th was the president, former president and his team's best efforts to prevent Joe Biden from being uh, elected and taking office. You know, a lot of that plan hinged on Pence, uh, who had been so loyal. They thought he would be again and follow through with what Donald Trump wanted. Pence did not, of course. Uh, and his own life was put in jeopardy that day. He and his family. We remember the hang Mike Pence chants that went up from the crowd. And Pence is now trying to have a, del a delicate balancing act where he has been firm that, hey, I did the right thing on January 6th, he's saying. I did my constitutional duty. I had no other choice. At the same time, Pence clearly wants to run for president himself in 2024. We'll see if he does, if Trump falls through with his own bid. But right now, he is trying to continue to say he did the right thing, but at the same time, not anger 
Trump or Trump loyalists too much while doing so. And I think that's what we heard yeah. from a lot of other Republicans as well this week and in the wake of those remarks and in the wake of the legitimate political discourse uh, conversation where they can say, hey, Pence, we support what Mike Pence did on January 6th, but we still think Donald Trump is the overwhelming favorite in 2024 and he would have our support were he the Republican nominee. Yeah. So, Tom, let me ask you, I, I, I'm, I'm curious, you, you look at a lot of data points. Uh, we've been talking about the fact that, you know, now uh, only 60 percent of Republicans are saying they want Donald Trump to run for reelection. Forty percent say they don't. I, I just I, I quoted the AP poll that said the majority of Republicans consider themselves Republicans first. Only like 35 percent consider them, themselves to be Trump supporters first over being party members. That's a, a, a pretty dramatic swing. Now, you look at the fact that Republicans, for some reason, and I say some reason, actually, I know why, they're seeing things in the polls. Republicans, even Josh Hawley, are starting to come out criticizing the violence that happened on January the 6th. Uh, I, I, I'm curious, why do you think we are seeing some movement uh, in the direction of normalcy? I'm not saying that I'm not trying to normalize Donald Trump. I'm not trying to normalize my former party. I'm just curious, do you see any trend lines moving away from the, the complete lunacy of the Trump years in the Republican Party? Well, I think you see cross currents. Uh, certainly, you know, a lot of these folks are looking at polls and the, of the kind you just pointed out and saying, um, you know, there's room now to say, I, I don't have to be part of the cult um, because as you pointed out, you know, there are people saying I'm a Republican first, I'm a Trump or second. Um, but I also think that the, there are currents in the other direction. I mean, we're talking th about this, as as Mika just pointed out, um, in the shadow of the censure of the last two independent uh, Republicans in Congress, um, that we're talking about this uh, while other Republicans have had to push back against the Republican National Committee trying to whitewash um, yeah. January 6th. The, the Wall, Wall Street Journal's language was interesting. They said that, you know, good for Mike Pence for saying the president pressured him to commit an unconstitutional act. Doesn't that tell us how far and how low the standards in the party have dropped that this that a year over a year later, Mike Pence is kind of getting a golf clap for saying, yes, the president asked me to do something I shouldn't have done when in an earlier, I think, better time, Republicans would have said we have to do something about the fact that the de facto leader of the party it just is an enemy of the Constitution. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm happy to say two cheers for Mike Pence, but maybe just one and a half or two. Um, but I, I, I still think that this isn't, you know, um, this this is too late and t at least a bit too little. Yeah, and, and, and Mika, of course, I think it's shocking, even coming from uh, Donald Trump's RNC, and he still owns this RNC. I know. The language that January the 6th was, quote, legitimate political discourse is about uh, to say that violence, that sort of violence was legitimate political discourse, mm -hmm. actually, uh, unfortunately, fits very tightly into the definition of fascism in any country, well, uh, in this country or any other country. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.